There are only three days left before Royal Caribbean's Sovereign of the Seas is scheduled to leave the Grand Bahama shipyard in Freeport. The crew is frantically working to ready the ship. Today's Friday. Day 18, I think. We've got Saturday, Sunday, Monday left before we leave. We got a call this morning that Peter, the leader of our team, is flying in with Jack Williams, our president, who's coming in for a quick look-see on, on a whirlwind tour just to make sure that we're going to be finished on time and I'm sure it'll give us the message that we've got to get done. Normally there's about 70 guys in there, Jack. That's it's what downstairs, you're saying, and it's safe, but it's, uh, but it's their lunchtime. Okay. All right, catch them in a bit. It's always interesting when you get visits from very senior personnel. Uh, clearly they have the, the big picture and the big overview, but of course uh, this type of job we're looking at lots and lots of detail. All the turf will be blue turf. Uh, a lot of work here to do in three days. Today I just came over from uh, Miami to take a look at what was going on on this ship because we're investing quite a bit of money revitalizing it and wanted to see what stage we were at and spend some time with Peter Fitton and walk through the ship. Every single time. I wanted to give him a flavor of how much work is done roughly a couple of days before the ship should be ready if nothing major goes wrong. You can see that this is a day away from completion. Looks to me like it's a couple weeks away. One of the challenges is to lay the new carpet while we are all moving here. Yeah, right. It's a nightmare. We did all the changes for the show. We put this wall up there. This gets a fixed seating here. Cool. Nice seats, sir. Those are very nice. Yeah. Don't worry, we'll be done. I mean, it's... It's not my job, it's yours. We have a fabulous bunch um, in our review cast. They left the ship during dry dock uh, to rehearse the new show, Shoreside. And we had teased them before they went off to say, bring your own boom box, because, you know, you might be rehearsing to that when you get back. <laughs> oh, my God! The sovereign! Oh! Oh! Sovereign! Oh! <laughs> it looks oh. like a clean. Oh. It, it looks like an like 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 We have left here. I mean, yeah! Sovereign! Oh, my God! I can't believe that. It's dirty. It's dirtier than we left. Was it ever white? It's kind of brownish. Look at our rescue propeller. Hi, oh, guys. Oh, Welcome home. Here. You guys ready to schlep? Our cast arrived back to the ship. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's up, there's a level, and then there's a second level, and then you go across, and then you go down, and then the gang is on deck one. <laughs> They're not accustomed to the dry dock experience. May I never have to do this again for the rest of my life. <laughs> the gangway was probably... <laughs> and they're there with their tennis shoes on and all of their luggage. It was absolutely comical to see them coming up the gangway when they got back. Yeah! <laughs> Picture is worth a thousand words. That was an experience. The sovereign better be worth it. We usually take the cast off during this type of project just because they're, they're typically a slightly different personality type from the rest of the crew. They travel light. They do. None of the water works. None of it does. They're just excited about being back home. No toilet. What's, what's, I don't know. logo used to be lit up by neon. Neon lasts for five years, that's it. We need to find another option. LEDs will last about 100,000 hours, which we calculated about 20 years. We were originally told that we had to get done by tomorrow. They came back to me today saying, no, it has to go up latest tonight. If we work through the night, uh, we might be able to get up the last one tomorrow morning. So it's all depending on the circumstances and how good the crane guy is. So pretty much around 7 or 8 o'clock tonight, we will be ready to go. But we won't get a crane before around 12 o'clock because we don't want to tie up the crane during the work hours. So around 
10 o'clock, they start prepping the anchor, putting on a flatbed to bring it over by a truck. That went okay. But then they started um, to lift it. And lifting is not an easy task. It's going to take about two hours per sign to pass it. You can't really get it steady on because it's shifting. It took about 12 hours, a little bit longer than what we thought. Did it move? Okay. Let's not solve all the problems. Let's just solve one problem at a time. So we're going to use this one first. Correct. We have this big mechanical air pressure clock that has never worked. We do have this dream of being able to get the clock working and fixed. Uh, one of the designers, Carlos, the IT engineer, Dominic, and myself have opened it and looked at it, and we think we're going to be able to fix it. The clock's ticking. That clock's not ticking. The story of the clock continues. Carlos is now back with all the parts that he needs. So um, I wish him luck, but he hasn't got long. Because the carpet's going down, and if it doesn't get fixed, the clock's got to go. Crane's coming at 8 o'clock, man. He may be ready for that. But do we have a case of beer on this? Case of beer. OK. I can make those hands move. No, 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 that's not what I said. <laughs> <laughs> They're sending out the crane to take it out at 8 in the morning, if it doesn't work. Uh, it's fair to say that the time is running out for the clock. It has not got long left. Three hours of the morning, Christian Compton and Carlos Reyes are desperately trying to fix the clock. If they don't succeed, a crane will haul the timepiece away in less than six hours. This has power. This has 110. Is that the right connector? One. Okay, let's see that one. Let's try and get the minute one going a little bit faster than the other one so we actually feel like it. <laughs> Looks like the clock is safe. I think it's going to be symbolic of the way the ship is. It's not going to be perfect, it's not going to be brand new, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to look good and hopefully add a positive environment to the area. How's it going? Today is Saturday. We've got uh, two days left before we want to leave on Monday night. So one of the things we need to do today is to get around all the spaces with all the contractors uh, and make an assessment of what materials they need left. Uh, otherwise, they'll hold on to things right till the very last minute. If we get two good days today and tomorrow, uh, we should be able to get some water in the dock and start getting ready to sail. Crane's on break, so we, they're going to move forward. Yeah, don't say that. Don't say that. That's the worst thing you could have said right there. When's it popcorn time? Oh, tomorrow night. The theater needs all the seats installing. The complication there is the production team and the singers and the dancers need to get on the stage to practice. So um, that may become a little congested in there, but they'll have to work around each other and um, learn how to get on. So what we're going to do is block number by number whatever like. Five beautiful dancers. So they're working in space. What do you think they're going to do? <laughs> look at the hammer or look at the girl? So we have to coordinate the timing a little better. <laughs> what can you do? This is not something new. We, we knew about this. We agreed that at this stage of the construction, these guys would come to the theater and use it for the rehearsals. Now we have another problem that we need to take care of in the pool. Well, the pool deck, we had kind of a bad situation today because we have painted the bottom of the pool, the shallow portion of the pool, four times already. Okay, so what's the real solution? Clean it and paint. <laughs> but um, are we going to be able to keep people from walking on it? He's going to start sanding here right away. 
Yeah, I could have this done today. Uh, do you think you? I don't know if your people could do this or not. It's just a question. To board this with plywood, vertical, oh. like this. It doesn't help. No. People will back and forth here. Yeah, but if we have a plywood. We need somebody to keep people out of this pool all the time. We're gonna have to stop it. We had to call everyone and make a plan so that everybody would agree so we can make it happen. So for the fourth time, we're trying all over again tonight. Because bye, otherwise, bye. we won't finish ever, ever. It's absurd. Hello, Peter. Hey, how are you? Very well, thanks. All right, when are you done here? We have had a lot of problems with this area because people are stepping on the tick again. The tick guy has to polish. He produces a lot of dust, of course. Then Susanna has to clean. Then Marine has to paint the prime. Then we have to do the stencil. And we have been going through that round, I don't know how many times, and people are stepping on the tick again. Yeah, we have covered it. We have yeah, then protect it again. Yeah, that's what we're doing now again. We'll get it done tomorrow. So, so let's get it done. Yeah. We're out of time. That's it. It's over. With time running out, there is no room for any mistakes or delays. You guys are working hard, and you're on day 20 of dry dock. Four days to go until shakedown, and two days until we're in Miami. I'm going to give Christian the chance to run uh, the project meeting uh, to uh, give him the opportunity to speak to all the contractors directly and see how he responds to uh, all the points that will be raised. Uh, I think he understands the big picture really, really well, so I, I think he'll do okay with it, but it'll be a good experience for him. we got a lot of work to do. We're inside of two days. You heard it in the elevator on the way up. It is the final countdown. We have delayed filling the dock until 9 p.m. so we can get the cranes going. George, can you give us a little update of what's going on with the material and the plan that you have for the day? We want to get as much product off today, garbage cleaned out by 7 o'clock this evening. The crane is free and is ready to go. There's a lot of work that needs to be done around the pool and the turf. All right, I think we'll just go around if anybody has any issues. We weren't able to finish last night um, in the computer room. Today, it will be on and off. Your computers will be working at one point and not working at the next because I can't afford to wait for a window. If you're working on documents, save often. Okay. I ran the meeting this morning. I just dealt with the usual issues that everybody else deals with. It's not like they haven't heard it before. So why would it be any different if I told them? I guess he just wanted to see if I could run the meeting on my own. So I guess I did all right. Dennis, do you have a map? For the fifth time, we have dirt again in the pool. We board this up all around last night at midnight, and now somebody stepped on it last night somehow. So we cannot keep going around this endless circle anymore. Susan Nelson, are you there? Um, I'm here with the facility manager, Carlos. We're working on this. Hold on. Susan is very, very good. When she hears the radio, she takes care of it. I've worked with Carlos on um, several past projects. His layouts are creative, and I'm always amazed. This is the nicest human being they've got ever put here. He never, ever becomes irritated about anything. Oh, forget it. You know what? I'm going to start painting no matter what. You already did this part, yeah, right? Doing it right, coming right here. OK, I'm going to paint something. So I'll start that way. Yeah. Thank you, my friend. Like, you know, he's right there. There you go. Yeah, he <laughs> Comes like this and goes like there. Thin. Smaller and smaller. So it's like this. White, thin, thin. white. Okay. What do you think? I like it. Okay. Before we left Freeport, there was a, a real rush to, to get everything off. It's really important to clear everything really, really quickly and um, be clean for, for sailing. Um, we don't want anything on the outside decks because we don't want to risk putting anything into the ocean. Um, but so that would have to be secured and you don't want it inside because of the fire hazard. saying the crane's not operating, it, it, it'll swing and lift. You won't prosper. 
Hey, if, he, if he can't travel or he can't cable. Can't throw him up or down, Jack. They won't move that crane. Man, you guys are sounding tired and we didn't even get to midnight yet. Well, I've been tired for a week. I'm doing the worrying time. I have a feeling this is not good. You can see uh, the tension starting to rise. The yard's a good yard. They have good equipment. They work hard, they try hard, but they're limited to one crane on this dry dock to hit the upper decks. So that limits me quite a bit. If it breaks down, then I'm in trouble. Did they figure out the problem? No. We're all getting tired now. Now everybody's up on the, up on the platform having a look at the drums. Hey, Kevin, you've got the head electrician sitting up there right now, and they're walking around on the back near the drums of cable. That's not a good sign. Uh, I'll let you know something as soon as I know something, Kevin. They're all up there working on the crane now. In a project like this, the time is of the essence to deliver on time for each and every part the vendor needs. We have very often a chain reaction situation, so the smallest things they don't receive triggers certain other things which can't be done. All right, so we're gonna unhook up? Uh, we might as well stay here until they fix it because we might not be able to get back here. I was called to be informed that a sprinkler head had actually gone off. Unfortunately, it had gone off over our newly installed um, technical equipment in one of our lounges. The leak ended up being right over the booth. Unfortunately, they didn't have the foresight to protect our equipment, and so as soon as the pipe burst, the rest of the sprinkler head um, started to leak. It just leaked right down into our equipment. Sad to say that we lost some hi-fi equipment in one of the aft lounges um, where one of the sprinkler heads was not fitted correctly or just hadn't been nipped up tight enough. Too late. Best thing we do is air it out and get a fresh look at it tomorrow morning. Okay. Crane's been broken down for about the last two hours. It was an electrical problem. Okay. Hey, Kevin. The crane will travel and it will swing, so they may be able to get at an angle and travel. They're just not going to be able to reach across the uh, pool deck. It's just going to make it for a long night because they're going to flood the dock at 7, so we'd be down another two hours. <sighs> Looks like he's working. And I see a container in the air. Yes, we do have a bed in the air. But did he boom it up to get it there, or is he just cabling up? He's cabling up. All right, we're in business, gentlemen. Good turn. Yeah. They're moving some containers from the starboard side of the ship to the port side for me in case it breaks down again. So when we come into Miami, I won't have to turn the ship, which uh, gets very expensive and time consuming. Hopefully we'll be able to make these moves and then continue to work through the night. Uh, it's still not booming, it's just cable down. Well, that may be how we unload for the rest of the evening, is just move the crane, traverse it back and forth. It's not going to be ideal, but we'll get some things off. I oh, hear yeah. you. Yeah, Kevin, um, it's going to be a little bit slow, but we will get there. They're going to float the ship. That's always kind of an interesting element because it's a real test for the Marine. They need to have done everything, sealed everything, be watertight. Obviously, the underwater part of the ship is very important. We have to make sure that the integrity of the hull is, is, is watertight at all times. As soon as they're ready, we will start to bring the boats in. We're going to six meters at the moment. At what draft will you, uh, will you float? We should be floating in normally a six and a half meter, but now there is not much left in the tank. to the end of it now and um, can tell you that we are all looking forward to get back to service in a few days time and because this has been a very long haul for everybody on board. Sailing 
time is projected to 5 p.m. today. Sailing time will be sailing out of Freeport at 5 p.m. heading for Miami. If you are departing the ship today, you need to leave prior to noon. There will be a second window available briefly at 5 p.m. It's the final day today. We need to leave uh, Freeport tonight. So the big thing that we're trying to get done is get the upper decks clear, get deck seven clear of garbage. We've got about uh, 14 or 15 crane lifts left, um, and then we're good to go. We have three days before we have any guests on board. So it's going to be pretty much 24 hours nonstop from here till there. They are assigned to go to lunch from 11 to 12. They were saying that it was a little hot for them and if we didn't provide them with hot, uh, they left. Carlos, I, I don't know where they are now. They cannot work without supervision. I cannot be there and be here. But right now, I have got to get this lobby cleared so we can pad it for carpet. It's a very hectic situation right now because we have to paint the bottom of the pool. On top of that, I went out to see how advanced it was the, the work, and the painter disappeared. I'm very worried about the pool. Leo, Marlon, I'm looking for you, please. OK, guys, I got a problem. These Big people problem. are telling me that you left them at 9.30 and haven't been working all morning. We are there at the work. OK, I can't do this. This can't work. He said he hasn't seen you since 9.30 this morning. The schedule is getting behind and behind. I mean, this is something that we should have done yesterday. I am sorry to disturb your lunch, but yeah. if you guys can't learn to communicate with the people you're assigned to... Guys, I don't ever want to get called in again. Please. At what time are you going to be back there? See you at 12 o'clock there. Okay. It's a very slow process because it's a complicated pain and they were taking a rest in their cabin. We are two days away, and once it starts getting dark, they cannot paint anymore. We are only in the first pool. Now we have to do the other one. It's really compromising a lot of things, and the schedule is getting behind quickly. These bosses, all these damn bosses. God. We are delayed. Uh, this is not unexpected. We have postponed uh, our departure time. My best estimate is that we're going to be around 10, 11 o'clock tonight and head back home to Miami. A few hours delayed, but not bad at all. We set ourselves a target of early evening, and we were, we were really hoping we could achieve that. But one of the big things we have to do today is to test the PA system to make announcements for safety drills or, God forbid, evacuation at any time is very important. <laughs> But it's a right pain for everyone else because they have to play the, the generated tone or the, the safety peeps and it just gets very irritating after a while. It's getting a little old. They've told us that this could go on for up to an hour. It could go on longer, but I hope not. The schedule, is it's, it started off a little slow this morning. After the furniture comes in, then the, my guys need to run all the cabling and start building out the computer room. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> As you can see, nothing is up at this time. So the racks, that hopefully should be done today. It usually takes us about seven days to properly build a computer. See, I, huh? I need to talk to Remy. He thinks that there was supposed to be a plate in here, the AC. Yes, plate. yes, there is. And he says that you guys are doing that. At this point, it doesn't matter whose job it is. It needs, it needs to get done. But the AC pipes are under and the suctions are all there, so you're happy? Yeah. From, from MML, what I have, I can work with. Come down with the test so it won't be any more signals now. We still have a few hours of daylight. We want to get as much moved as we possibly can. But I'll be very happy when we set sail tonight. And uh, two good days in Miami. Once we get all this protective material up, the old lady will be unveiled. She's going to look nice. Job, eh? A very good evening, Sauber to the Seas. This is a very important announcement from your cruise director, Keith, on behalf of our captain. We need your help. Well, all available personnel, managers, supervisors, staff, and crew, we need your hands to help remove the garbage right now. We are under a total time pressure. We've got about two hours before the crane stop operating. We need all hands on deck to get this trash off the ship. Join the fun. Grab some gloves. This is one for the team. 
you go ahead. You need to keep an overview of what's going on. That doesn't mean just getting on with hauling garbage yourself, keep an overview of the situation and where the people are and what they're doing, okay? That's all I'm doing. Bring more stuff over here. Jack, this one on 10, five minutes, 10 minutes, it'll be full. When a crane guy comes back, I'll swing around, but that's it. I'm not doing anything else over there. Okay, the rest we'll just have to box on with. True, that's what we got to do. Push your location, Paul. Turning around, walking back towards you on deck 11. It's not looking too bad if we keep going at the pace we're going. Everybody's working. Doesn't matter who you are, what position you have, everybody works tonight. We still got a lot of garbage to get off, and the cranes are moving, because they have coffee breaks every 20 minutes or something. I don't know. I think it's going to be some piecemeal working all night the next two days. Try to say, see what we can put up. You want these silver ones? No. Hey, yeah, I'm putting it in here. It'll only take us another good push to get rid of this as soon as I get a crane operator, and that'll free your area up a bit. AJ, AJ, come back. Hey, Paul. Any luck on the uh, operator for the Hitachi and when we can expect the dumpsters? No. I'll be to uh, on deck one. Yeah, deck one, yeah. Suddenly I had Christian on the radio saying someone from the project team, someone from the project team, and, and you could hear that something big was happening because he sounded a little bit panicked. There was a drunk contractor lying on the dock under the track of the crane. The crane couldn't move, everything had to come to a complete standstill. He's passed out on the dry dock wall and the crane operator won't move with him laying around. He wobbled his way out here in the security. Christian, Christian, I'll try and go shore side and shift these off. You better bring three or four guys with you, because this is a big bloke. Uh, yeah, are you the crane man? Christian, is he down on the dock side, is he? Yeah, yes, he's sir. right in the way of the crane. Kevin's got a whole crew out there to move him. Okay, because we need that operator back in the house. Excuse me. Excuse me, my friend. Come on. Dominic and I went onto the pier and picked him up as best we could without the utilization of a crane, which we thought we'd have to resort to. There's not many people that can outweigh both Dominic and myself, and this guy did. He was dead weight. Man, how this guy um, is not to come on board. Not to come on board. That's from the staff captain. Very large Finnish gentleman who's had rather too much to drink. <laughs> He's still shifted up. Cheers, <laughs> Uh, you can uh, you can plan for many moments in a in a job, but that's not one that we uh, we train for. It was perilously close to uh, the the crane wheels, uh, and quite rightly the crane driver said, "No, no, I can't, I can't move, I can't do anything." So uh, he had to be uh, persuaded to move from his current location to a, a safer one. Suzanne's running her crew, so she's yeah. been getting in the way. She's just getting in between everybody, telling yeah. people to sort stuff. We gotta get this off. We had a scenario where the container was grossly overfilled. And had it moved, had it been moved, we would have had a lot of material fall down below. She's taking it out faster than they're putting it in. As I pulled this stuff off, I realized these are baseboards. Some of them were packed this high, this thick, hardwood. Sanded, finished, ready to go for installation. And they were still bubble wrapped. For the operators that we have shoreside, They'll be sifting through it. Nothing really gets trashed um, that isn't usable, especially when it comes to materials such as that. And uh, I know she tries hard, but you've got to draw the line. Sophia, come out of there. You're not in a safe area by wearing those shoes, and you should be in your coveralls, girl. You know that. It becomes a cat and mouse game where I'm uh, the cat trying to catch the mouse, and they're trying to quickly make the mouse disappear. That's life. She, she wants to be a team player, she wants to get the job done, and she's passionate about what she does, and, and that's, she should be commended for that. So uh, we need to lay off Sophia a little bit. Sophia Environmental, what is your location? In a garbage rack. <laughs> Next couple of days, to still clean up, clean up, clean up, of course, and uh, have the ship ready in three days' time. This is the final container of dry dock. This is the last piece that we have to take off until we get to Miami.
The, the time in uh, the Grand Bahama shipyard in Freeport was, was an interesting time. But we got good service from them. They kept rolling. They were available to us uh, 24 hours a day if we needed them. So uh, it's in no small part to them that we managed to uh, achieve what we've done. This moves tight, but we've got the beard off. It's a miracle. I reckon we're good to go. Kevin, uh, it's Dave. Do you have Peter with you? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I haven't got a clue where he is. OK, I, uh, I need to speak to him urgently. Um, I'm on Channel Channel 4 on the Marine. Left him in officer's mess. Uh, we were um, just sitting in the officer's mess just having a cup of coffee after dinner, and uh, David Rice, superintendent, called and said the shipyard wasn't going to let us undock. And apparently the ship manager from the yard is seizing the ship, saying we can't leave because we haven't paid the full invoice. And that's a ridiculous statement because I know that Peter and Kevin were on the pier today talking about what the payments that should be due. We paid a high percentage of the invoice so that everybody was happy. And then we come back in a couple of weeks to work out the details of the contracts and the invoicing. And then we can pay the full payment then. Yes. Yeah, of course, I hear you. Do, do I understand right that, that you no don't want to lower the dock or what? Are you, are you sure what you're doing, man? From whom? So Dave made the decision not to undock if we are... We have said we come back in two weeks. If you stand with this word, I make hell now. Is that your last word, sir? Is that your last word? I'm sorry, is that your last word? I want to know that now. So you don't undock. I'm, I'm coming off the ship now. And now hell breaks loose, my friends. The first time in my life that somebody sees us. The shipyard is out of bounds on this one, I think, and uh, hopefully they'll, they'll come to an understanding that works for everybody. I was told we are not allowed to undock unless we settle the bill. I need to go off the ship. Where's it? Peter Fetton. The Sovereign of the Seas is almost ready to set sail for Miami, where the revitalization will be completed. Before the ship can undock, Peter Fetton must reach an agreement with the shipyard, which is threatening to hold the Sovereign in Freeport. We have settled the bill in two or three discussions uh, this morning, which is not a final settlement, but an 80% settlement. And this kind of pirate uh, structure, which I don't like, this is not really the way we want to be treated. I can discuss any invoice until the moon goes up, but never threaten us. We signed this morning in good faith, and that's it. But don't try to, to threaten us with, with undocking and whatever. No, but don't say to me, take it or leave it. No, we don't. We have 30 days' time to settle the bill. That's your conditions, not ours. We are one of the biggest customers of this yard, and we have always paid our bills, and we'll do that in future as well. You know, on the 15th, we settled the bill. Okay. And we need to be, do a bit of homework, but the usual homework. That's fine. I started 80, what is it, 24 years. Nobody has ever threatened me not to, to get out of the yard. <laughs> Can we start up the engines now? Yeah, you can start up the engine. Yeah, okay, zero pitch, start the engine. Oh. Uh, Tuesday morning, 1 a.m. in the early morning hours, and tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock in seven hours from now, we're going to be picking up the pilot in Miami and head in and dock alongside Pier 56 West around 9 ish, 9 o'clock. This is good. I mean, we still got a lot of work to get done tonight, tomorrow, the next day, but things are moving forward now. We're moving into the next phase, the finishing phase. After a long and draining two weeks of dry dock in the Bahamas, the project team will have just 48 hours left in Miami before the Sovereign must be ready for the shakedown cruise. Look out your window, folks. We are no longer in Freeport. We're back in Miami.
Miami. The time has come, so clean up crews. Make sure you are putting your backs into it. We are going to rock and roll this ship until it is sparkling clean. All the areas are pretty much constructed. Our job now, make sure that they are up and running by the time we start welcoming guests tomorrow afternoon. There's so much work still going on. Christian is a person who is liked by everybody because he is eager to learn, he is eager to help. He is one of the stars of this project and even after one or two he can be even a project manager. My boss came on board today, Maria, and we did a walk around. Maria is Senior Vice President of uh, Hotel Operations. She is very dedicated to a good product. She's a great leader. What we're looking at now is um, putting some putty on and then painting it. Um, the panels are not going to work. We're, we're not able to make that. But these turned out terrific. Good. They work. PBX is working. <laughs> yeah. Can you stop causing trouble around here? Yeah. <laughs> At this point in the project, we need to do that spit shine that the, you know you may think of. We'll do what we call a heavy cleaning, put on her furniture, and she'll be beautiful. for the whole ship. No, that's not They're correct. That's not correct. No, but that's the way that he yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you for letting me know what's going on. I will have it stopped immediately. The deadline is really important to us right now. And unfortunately, we have other things such as normal operations or normal accumulation to worry about. We have over 70 drums of sludge residuals from tank cleaning in the engine that have to come off the ship. We're just trying to coordinate how we get the cooking oil. We've got over 1,000 liters cooking oil, and we also have a ton of food waste. So I have spoken with Amanda, who's been extremely helpful, and I'm sure that uh, she's working on correcting the situation. She's got the pressure to get all the garbage off, and I have the pressure to get all the, the furniture on. And, and then it, it clashes. It, it doesn't crashes. go together. This is uh, everything we needed to replace all the equipment that was flooded in the secondary lounge in decade aft. Everything was destroyed when the sprinkler pipe broke. We have a vendor in Miami who was able to go ahead and order everything. We emailed them two nights ago as soon as it happened, or three nights ago now actually, um, and they were able to order everything quickly, get it off Federal Express sent in, and here it is waiting for us on the dock. Hopefully we'll be able to get it installed tonight or tomorrow morning, be ready for the night. This is, is the cleanup. We've taken, uh, I think, maybe 13 dumpsters off, something like that. My third cigar of the day. Wait, okay. pretty stressful day for everyone today and I think partly because we're we're really not as far ahead as we wanted to be at this point and I think there's some frustration around that. And, uh, Kevin and I voiced our concerns about the amount of work that was still left. 
we had a discussion as to whether we should proceed with the shakedown cruise, whether we should cancel it. There's a lot of disappointment. Everybody wants to do a good job and everybody wants to finish this and, ha and have it perfect. And, um, uh, and it's not as perfect as we'd like it to be right now. I'm clearly at the lowest point that I've been so far in the project. In the last couple of days, I've given them hope. Until, until about delivery minus maybe seven, I still had, still had hope that we could somehow or another make more hours in the day or get lucky. Carpet would begin laying down correctly itself. <laughs> in the last couple of days, I've just accepted the fact that we're going to get out of here skin of our teeth with a passable performance, and you know? that's never made me happy. Time is nearly up, and the Sovereign isn't ready. Garbage, garbage, garbage. We're moving garbage everywhere. Carlos can't find his furniture. We have a problem. Without furniture, the spaces don't come to life. Can, can you get a tape measure so you, we know the height? Will the shakedown crews have to be canceled? It's unacceptable to cancel the shakedown. The crew encounter leave port. Find out on the next Dry Dock, a cruise ship reborn.